Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my encounter with the pickle worm. The pickle worm comes from the pickle moth, and the pickle moth overwinters in the frost-free areas of Florida. And as the temperatures warm up, it starts migrating further north. And I didn't get nailed by this pickle worm until right after, well, right at harvest time with my cucumbers. I would bring my cucumbers in, put them on the countertop, and then I would notice this residue on the outside of one or two of them, and it would be on the countertop. I didn't think anything of it, I just thought it was something I brought in from the garden. But then I started planting my butternut and my spaghetti and some jack-o'-lantern uh, pumpkins. And I had amended that soil heavily with 10-10-10 and rabbit and horse manure. And it, everything was just thriving. It, it was just wonderful. And then I'd come out, uh, I came out one day and I just noticed a couple of yellow leaves. And I said, well, maybe I'm overwatering. So I cut back on the water and the yellowing continued. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I started examining the fruit, and that's when I discovered the holes and the frass. Where's the frost? Tomatoes, tomatoes. And I did some investigation online, and that's when the diagnosis had been confirmed. It was pickle. So come with me, and let's go outside and see what's going on. Right here is a great example of what to look for to see if you have pickle worm. This is a butternut squash, which the whole plant is infected. There are some squash that are not, and we'll talk about those later. So let's take a closer look. All right, what you see here, that's called frass, F-R-A-S-S. And basically it's poop, and the worm crawls in here, and he eats, and he backs out. So let's take a look at the rest of the squash. And you can see it's it's really bad on this squash. So what I think we should do is go inside and do an autopsy, if you will, and see what's inside. You got a worm on the outside. You got the holes. You got the frass. And in this hole right here, you can actually see the worm inside. And what they do is they eat and they come out and poop, which I think it's what it's about to do right now. I don't know if these are abandoned. I have to look down in there. No, there's worms in there. I can see them. So I'm quite interested in seeing exactly what they do, what it looks like on the inside, because I'm interested. So let's do an autopsy. Let's see, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this in half. But let's get this cut open. I'm gonna try to miss this hole, just get to the side of it, and that hole. All right, I'm gonna sink this knife down first. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Try to get a cross section. All right. All right. Look at here. That's what he's doing on the inside. That was a good cross section for the first try. How about that? And he's building a cocoon. We 
here's the other one right in here all right I'm gonna try to do a cross section again without hurting anything dig this out I'm not sure what that is let me dig that out it may just be a seed oh these are smaller worms I see it moving now I don't need if these are smaller pickle worms or what that is it's most likely smaller pickle worms they just haven't grown up enough to start building their own cocoon now this is just an experiment. I went through all the rest of the squash and looked them over very, very well. And I don't see any more holes, but this is all I could salvage, hopefully. I don't know if this experiment will work. I'll have to come out here and adjust these nets as they grow. But this is the only way I can think of keeping what I do have left safe from these worms and I will keep you updated as to whether or not it worked. So I went online and I bought some BT. And unfortunately I cannot pronounce that so I'm just going to call it BT. Now I did find it at Home Depot under another brand for three dollars cheaper. And I did get a sprayer that I'm designating just for the application of this pesticide. This is the first time I've ever grown any type of squash. I had no idea what I was doing. So you live and you learn and at least now I know so next year's crop is going to be abundant. There's the train. All right so these two businesses should be closing for lunch and once they do I'll take you out back and then we'll see how the squash did with the netting. I think I was able to save the squash. They're almost ready. Still have a little bit more. They still have a little bit of green. This has got to tan up a little bit. But I was able to save some of them. But as you can see, they just devastated the rest of my squash. And I had pumpkins over here too, so they're all gone. Let's see what we have here. No, I wrapped a worm up in one. But it looks like I did a pretty good job on the rest of them. So this is seven total that I managed to rescue. That's amazing. See, this one's almost ready. I think a couple more days this will be done. These are still a little bit yellow. But all in all, the netting worked. I was. I thought this was a complete loss. I'm glad I didn't get upset and just jerk out the whole vine. So netting everything seems to work. Unfortunately, no matter how many new blooms showed up on the vine, they all got decimated. The moth would come out at night, lay her eggs on the blooms, They'd eat the blooms and then therefore no more fruit. And they're still busy. So this is about all I'm going to get this year, but I'm grateful for that. So next year I'm going to grow the plant and as it's growing, I'm going to treat it with BT. And when the bloom gets pollinated and fruit starts to set, that's when I'm going to wrap it in some netting. And of course, I'm going to have to put enough netting around to allow for it to grow. And so I'm super stoked already about next year. So I appreciate you being here. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you found this video informative, then please hit that like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I appreciate you being here, and I will see you in the next.